what's up you guys welcome back to part 12 of our chat app series in the last part we looked at sending messages and in this part we're going to look at loading those messages to our conversation list as well as when we tap into it uh, to our actual chat controller so i actually just went through all of part 12 and i was uh, apparently almost done and my computer decided to restart itself so i just reset all my changes so this is take two. So fingers crossed that uh, my computer doesn't decide to restart again. So the first thing we want to do is create some custom cells for uh, a custom cell for this conversation list. Then we want to update our database manager to add a listener for conversations and messages. So it happens in real time. And we also need to make one adjustment to our database schema for something that I forgot in the last video. So let's start with that adjustment first, since it's probably the easiest piece to do. So in our database manager.swift file, we have uh, these two functions here, which uh, rather this function here, which goes ahead and creates a new conversation. But what I realized is we never actually pass in the other user's name. And we care about the other user's name because uh, what on earth are we going to show in the conversation list? So go ahead and come into here and we want to update this function, which is create conversation and add in another property here called name and have it take a string. And what we want to do is in the structure that we create to put into our database, we want to also put a name variable in here and pass in name. And once we have done that, the first message that is actually appended into our message collection in this other function below it, we want to also pass in the name here. And for each, each consequent message that we send, we want to put in the name there too. And to be clear, that name is for the other user. So for this function, have it take a name as well. So I'm going to have it take a name parameter as the first one here. And in the dictionary down here, add a comma, add a name key, and add a name, which is the one that's coming in via the parameter. And we now need to change the call site of this function. So go ahead up here and put a name, colon name with a comma. Let's fix up that indentation. And also here, put a name, colon name, put a comma, fix up the indentation, hit command B to build. Uh, let's learn to spell this correctly. Try that one more time. Looks like we've got an error here too, so that shouldn't be the case. So we have a name here, and I think that's what I called it in the parameter, unless I spelled that wrong too. Uh, so I have this and that should be a name, hit command B. So we should have an error, uh, not in here, we should have it in our chat view controller. And this is complaining as well because this should be string. And here, let's see, this wants a name, which is good now. That looks good. We're going to have an error in our chat view controller, as we see here, because we need to update the signature here. So whenever we create a new conversation, uh, because we know that the title of this screen is the other user's name, we can simply do name is self dot title. And that's optional. So otherwise, we're going to provide an user, a hard coded string, and we still have one error in here. And the reason we have this error in here is because, let's see, name, colon, should be name. Do a command B one more time. We have a comma. Not sure why this is complaining. There we go. Maybe that was a semicolon before. So now whenever we create a new conversation, we're going to include those name properties. So let's hit command R to build and run in our simulator. Hit the plus to look for Joe, which is the other user. Click on his name. And here, let's type in a message. Uh, hello, Joe. This is the first message I am sending your way. 
and go ahead and hit send in our database now we should have entries which we do we have this conversation and it now includes the other user's name and let's go ahead and also open up this and this should have the name for each message in here too which it uh, does I believe where is it there it is Joe Smith so now we can actually create that custom cell I mentioned here and pull in the conversations so the custom cell pretty straightforward uh, right click on the views folder that we've got here do new file Coco touch class make it a subclass of a conversate rather of a table view cell call it a conversation table view cell I'm gonna do all of it in code so no need to check this hit enter twice to create and save it and we can go ahead and get rid of all of this jazz and we want to include uh, three functions the first one is an override for the initializer and we're gonna call super init with that same initializer passing in style and reuse identifier the next one we want is an override of layout subviews and this is the function where we lay out our subviews as the name implies and then we also want a public func and we're gonna call this configure with a model which implies we're gonna create a model let's just make it a string for now and we'll uh, set up a model in just a moment. And if we hit Command B, actually we don't even need to, you'll see this is complaining here because we also need to bring in this other initializer. So go ahead and hit Fix and it'll stub it out for you. This cell also needs three subviews. The first one is a user image view, and that's an image view that we're gonna load the avatar in. It'll be an image view, whoops. Let's try that again image view and we're gonna have the image view sometimes the autocomplete just really doesn't like to work and uh, it probably doesn't help that I spell half of the stuff wrong so image view it's gonna have a content mode of scale aspect fill it's gonna have a, a layer corner radius of 50 it's gonna be a circle so we're gonna hard code the numbers and it's gonna have an uh, layer masks to bound as true and we're going to return that image view here and then we also want two labels the first one is going to be username label it'll be a ui label and you can go ahead and create that in here as follows make sure you put the parentheses for the constructor we're going to say label dot uh, font is going to be system fonts 21 with a weight of semi bold we are going to also then return the label and we also want one more label in here so go ahead and copy and paste it and this other label as you can probably guess is going to be the user message label and the difference here is the font size will be slightly smaller with a type of regular and for this, we're going to allow it to line wrap. So number of lines will be zero. And in this uh, constructor, after the super, we want to say content view and add all those sub views. So all three of them. So the user image view, user name label, and user message label. And like I said, we want three functions. So the one we added was the whoops I meant to put this stuff in here in the constructor so the three that we've got here are the uh, initializer the layout sub view and the configure this one it forces us to bring in but if we really want to count it I guess it's four now in the layout sub views what we can do is give a frame to each of these sub views first up is the image view and this will be a CZ rect with the X Y width and height we're going to hard code the width and height to be 100. The X is going to be 10 and the Y will be 10. Let's copy and paste this twice for the other subviews. So user, name, label. And actually, let me get rid of this last one. Once we fill this out, we'll copy this. So the X on this will be uh, the left of the user image view, rather the right, plus 10. Y of 10 is fine. Height is going to be the content view dot height minus 20 over 2. 
the width is going to be uh, the content view dot width and subtracting 20 for a buffer between this and this buffer as well as subtracting uh, the width of the image view so user whoops image view dot width so let me copy this whole thing paste it right below change this thing to be a user message label come on user message label let's control i this all to fix up indentation and the only thing we want to change here is the y of this label so this is going to be uh, the user name label dot bottom plus 10 and i believe that should be sufficient for laying out the subviews and what more do we need to do in here? Let's also add a static property because we need to register uh, the cell to our table view. So we're gonna call it static let uh, identifier. And we do need to do one more thing in here in this configure with uh, model business, but we need, we need to create a model before we can do that. So head on over to your conversation view controller and let's register the cell. So we're going to say uh, in the table view declaration, register uh, the, what did I call it? Conversation table view cell dot self for uh, the cell dot identifier. And the other thing while we're up here actually that we want to uh, add here is a private variable called conversations. And this is going to contain a array of conversation uh, models. And we don't have a conversation yet, so let's actually create this. And I'm gonna do it right up here. So a conversation is going to have an ID. It's also going to have a, I believe, name. And you might be wondering where I'm getting these from. It's basically what we have over here. So each conversation in our Array has an ID, we've got a name, we've got a other user email, and the latest message. That's what I'm basically creating here a model for. So we're going to say let other user email, also a string. Latest message will be another struct called latest message. And this is going to have a date, I believe. I think it was a string actually in our database. It's going to have text and it's going to have, I believe is read uh, as a message is read and a date. So I called the message text. So that's okay. So we're going to make this last one is read and it'll be a Boolean like so. And what we want to do is create a function which is going to attach a listener to that array in our database. And every time a new conversation is added, we're going to basically update the table view. So we're going to say start listening for conversations. Make sure you call this guy from view to load. So as soon as a controller loads, we start listening. And we're simply going to call the database manager that we added. And we have a function we stubbed on here called get all conversations. And the four is the user's email address. So we're gonna get that from user defaults. So this is gonna be user defaults, standard value for key, key is email, and this should be string. Else we're gonna return, and let's make sure I spelled that right. Now we have safe emails in the database because we can't use the dot in Firebase keys. So this is going to be database manager. Let me just copy and paste it. And I believe it's safe email and pass in that email. So we're going to pass this guy in here. The completion returns a result. So we're going to say result in. And we are also going to say weak self here because we're gonna to refer to the table view uh, if we need to refresh the data. So we don't wanna cause a memory cycle there. And in here we can switch on the results. And in the success case, we'll get basically conversations back. 
And in the failure case, we're going to have an error. And uh, don't worry, we haven't implemented this function yet. If you're wondering, we're going to do that next. Uh, failed to get convos and put the error in here. Otherwise, in this case, we can say uh, guard conversations is empty because if it's empty, there's no reason to update our table view. And uh, now if we know that it's not empty, we can say self.conversations equals conversations. This will give us an error right now because we need to update the signature of our return type to return a conversation model. I think when we stubbed it out, we just made it a string. So let's leave this here for now and let's go update our signature uh, everywhere to use this conversation thing. This is yelling at us because uh, latest message and I call this latest message. Let's get rid of that second M. So let's go implement that database manager. So there's a function we stubbed out called get all conversations. The result in the success case, we want this to return an array of conversation models like that. Go ahead and hit Command B and make sure things are still compiling. They should be, I believe. Awesome. Now in here, we want to attach a listener onto uh, the database for that uh, conversation key under the target user. So under the target user, we have this conversation which points to an array of conversation objects. So we in here are going to say database uh, dot child and the child is going to be the email which we already passed in the safe email for slash conversations and we want to observe and notice it's not observe single value we just want to observe continuously the value and every time that the value of this changes, aka a new conversation is created, we get uh, this completion handler called. So if you hit Command B, it should be building. And for some reason, my Xcode is not color coding anything. So I'm going to quit it and reopen it really fast because it's slightly annoying. So if that ever happens to you, go ahead and open Xcode again. Generally, Xcode likes to cause all sorts of problems when we're developing. There it goes, everything color coded nicely. Well, this is color coded, I guess. This should also be color coded, but there it goes, perfect, okay. So now in here, we're gonna say guard let value is our uh, snapshot dot value, and it should be an array of dictionaries where the key is a string and the value is any. And if we don't get this back, we're gonna return and we're gonna call completion with the failure case with a database error, and I think it's failed to fetch. Database error, failed to fetch. And we added this earlier, uh, further up in the file if you're wondering where this came from. Uh, and if we get past this, what we wanna do is we want to create a conversations uh, array, and we basically want to flat map rather compact map the value here and convert the dictionaries in it into our model. So uh, before we can actually compact map this dictionary, we want to validate that all the keys are present. So we're gonna have a pretty big guard let statement. So I'm gonna go to the database here and just take a look at these again to remember everything that's included. So we have a ID, latest message, it has a date, is read, and a message, name, and other user email. So this is everything we want to validate exists. And I think that's it, right? We don't need to worry about this guy down here just yet. So the first thing we're going to say is guard let conversation ID is going to be dictionary ID as a string we also want the name which is going to be dictionary name as a string uh, we also want is red which is going to be a dictionary is red as a boolean we want the latest message this is going to be a dictionary 
latest message, and this itself points to a dictionary. And let me fix these with the control I. And in this latest message, we want to get the uh, sent, which is going to be latest message dictionary and a date. And I think that was that was a part of this. Let me double check. So this has a date and is read and a message. So let's say the message is going to be a latest message, message key as a string, and lastly is read message. So it looks like we have two is reads here. Let me make sure that's correct. Looks like I might have done it incorrectly. Okay, we only have one is read in here. So there should be one. Uh, ID, name, and other user email. So let me actually make this one is red. And this is a bool. Now if we don't have these, we're going to return nil. And this is red should be other user email. Other user email. Let me make sure I typed all this correctly. So ID, name, other user email, latest message, date, message, and it is red. So hopefully this is all good. We have warnings here because we have all these things unwrapped but not used. And we also need to now down here, create and return the model. So the first thing we want to create is that latest message struct. So let's call it latest, let's actually call it, yeah, let's call it latest message uh, object. Can't call it latest message since we used that here already, which maybe wasn't the best call, but that's okay. Uh, so last message, latest message, and open the constructor up for that. And we want the one that's the type here. So the constructor has three things that we defined it to have. First one is the date, so go ahead and pass that in. And the second one, let's see, date. I think we called it date. Oh, we called it sent. That's not a great name. Let's change that to date. So we're going to pass in the date here, like so. For the text, we are going to pass in the message. And for the is read, we will pass in is read. And then we can return a conversation model and open up the parentheses for the constructor. ID is going to be conversation ID. The name is name. The uh, other user email is other user email. Latest message is latest message object. Hit command B. And let's see, what is this complaining about? So this is complaining about other user email. Up here, other user email. It's because we're casting it to a bool because it was it re is read before, but we want it to be a string. Hit command B and everything should be compiling now. And before we run it, we need to make some quick table view adjustments because we created that custom table view cell. So head to your conversation view controller. Uh, this is what we want. And up here, let's see, we are registering the cell and this conversations array we have created. We added this new message to use that new database manager stuff we just put together. We assign the new conversation. And what we also want to do in here is after we have assigned the new conversation, we also want to call reload data on the table view but we want to do it on the main thread because the main thread is where all the UI operations should occur. So go ahead and call reload data on optional self because it's weak self table view like so. Now let's quickly update some table view things and hit run in a quick second here. So here we can return the number of conversations in this array instead of a hard coded number we can get rid of this stuff and we can DQ a cell of uh, our cell type dot identifier and we can force cast it to our cell type we can call cell dot configure and pass in our model and up here we're gonna say our model is the nth positioned item in our array like that I don't think we actually implemented this configure function so we'll also do that and in this did select function for the table view, let's also get a model out. 
and instead of passing in some random email here, we can pass in model.otheruser email. This can be this dot name. And we also want to implement height for row at index path and return 120. If you recall, we made the height for the image 100. So we want a 10 point buffer on both the bottom and top of it. So let's go ahead. Right now, we'll get an error here because this model is a conversation type. And our configure function, I believe, took a string. Let's go to that cell and implement that configure function all the way down here, change the model type it expects to a conversation. And we're going to say self dot message user message label dot text is going to be model. Let me get rid of my antivirus pop up model dot latest message uh, dot text. We're going to say self dot user name label dot text is going to be model dot name. And finally, we want to do the image. And this one is particularly interesting because we first need to fetch the download URL from Firebase Storage and then download the image itself. We're going to come to the top here and import a framework that we brought in via CocoaPods in the very beginning of the series called SD Web Image. And this allows us to download and cache basically what we need. So you've already seen how to download an image directly. And we do that on the profile here. Notice that it downloads every single time, which is not ideal, but I, now I want to show the SD web image way of doing it since it basically takes care of caching for us. So we already know the path in our storage bucket of the picture. And the reason we know that is because we have standardized it in the storage here. You can see it's the safe email underscore profile underscore picture dot PNG. So we're going to say let path equals the uh, you other users email underscore profile picture dot png then on our storage manager whoops storage manager storage manager like so we can say uh, get download url for the given path pass in the path this returns again a result to us. And in the success case, we want weak self actually here. Uh, in the success, success case, it'll give us the download URL for the asset. So again, we're gonna switch on that result. And in the success case, we'll have a URL. In the failure case, we're gonna have a error. If we have an error, we are gonna print out fail to get image URL and append in that error here. And in this case, now what we can say, what's really cool about uh, SD web image is we can say self dot user image view dot SD set image with a URL and a completion, passing the URL directly, we can do nil for the completion. And this will actually take care of downloading the image and once it's ready, assigning it to the image view. And keep in mind, this is a UI operation, so we want to do it on the main thread. So wrap that whole call inside of dispatch queue main async. So hit command B. I believe we should be building now. And I don't know if we forgot anything, but I definitely think we'll find out when we run it. So just hit command R and let's see if we get our conversation list. And why is this complaining? Let's get rid of this here. Let's select the proper simulator and hit command R one more time. We don't want this guy. We want this simulator since we already have it logged in and everything. We should see our conversation list here if I didn't forget anything. I've noticed my simulator has been slow today, so bear with it. There it goes. And we should see our conversation list here and it looks like we don't, so that's not good. So let's see what we've got in our console here. So do we have any failures? We have some prints that looks like from Firebase. I don't see any failures in here, but we definitely don't have our conversation list. So let's go debug this and figure out where we are dropping off starting in conversation view controller. So we essentially in view did load call this function. So we definitely should not return in here. 
So I'm going to put a print statement and say starting conversation fetch. And we are going to basically be fetching with our safe email, which we are passing in here, which looks good to me. And once we get the success case, I'm going to print out successfully got conversation models and we assign them here and then we reload the table view and we already have a print in the failure here so let's uh let's say command r and see what uh what we have going on because clearly something is uh, being dropped off so down here we have starting conversation fetch and it looks like we don't actually ever call this completion handler so that's kind of fishy because we would either get this print statement or this print statement. So let's click into this guy and see what we've got going on in here. So the first thing we're saying is uh, guard let value. So we've said this is the email we want to observe slash conversations, which looks to be spelt correctly. And this will return a array in which we have dictionaries, which also looks to be correct. But we're not even returning the failure case because even if it failed it would come into here so that does not look correct to me in terms of what the issue is here we're returning nil oh that's duh this is what the problem is we create the conversations array with our compact map but it would be a great idea if we called the completion handler for success and passed it in and i bet you that's what the problem was well clearly that was a problem but go ahead and hit command r again these are my favorite moments in the videos that I screw it up myself, where we get to kind of debug it together. So there is our person's name, there is their latest message, and it looks like we don't have their image though. So that's the next thing we're going to take a look at fixing. So it says fail to get image URL. So this is happening in our actual cell. So let's go to our cell, uh, our table view cell, and see what we've got going on in here. So this is why print statements are handy. So it looks like we're coming into the failure case. The path that we're giving it is this. And actually, this is my fault because this whole thing is under a images folder. So try that one more time. And now it should be able to get the image and download and show it. So we should have the image come in now, hopefully. And it looks like we actually still don't have it because we, again, have this image URL failure here. And let's see, we have path of images model other user email profile picture and this should be a dot and i bet you some of you watching probably saw me type a comma and cringed um, but third time's a charm we should have the picture coming in now and boom there it is beautiful we have the user's name we have their latest message we can tap in and we don't see their messages yet but that's the next thing we're going to do and let me show you the power of sd web image the next time we open the application uh, what you'll notice is the image seems to come in faster and we can actually introduce more caching which we may or may not do at the end of the series so that said let's actually take a look at bringing these messages in now messages is verbatim uh, the same workflow that we use to bring in the conversations so what i'm going to do is simply go here and uh, copy this conversations array that we added at the very top and we are going to now go to our chat view controller and we want to add a array up here which holds messages which i think we actually have already yeah we actually have this already so uh, instead what we want to do is create a function here similar to what we did in the uh, conversation view controller and i'm going to call it listen for messages we're going to call this here in uh, view did load. And this is actually called self sender. So that's not right. We're going to call this in view did load, which is down here. And let me move that function down here. I didn't mean to put it all the way up here. So we're definitely going to organize all this code later on since it's getting a little all over the place to say the least. So the other thing we want to do is update our constructor for this class to also bring in an ID and it wants, it needs to be uh, string optional. And the reason is, is when we are creating a new conversation, there is no identifier yet, 
But when we click on or tap on a conversation that's in our list, it has an ID and that identifier is basically how we're going to observe on the uh, in the database uh, as to what thing is changing. So go ahead and assign that conversation ID parameter or a conversation ID property that we just added here. And we're gonna make this a private. And let's see, so that's a private in here. And now if we go back to the conversation view controller, we need to go all the way down here and update the constructor here because we just added that new property and it's an ID and we're gonna pass in model dot model dot ID, which is a conversation ID. And then we also create the chat view controller in the same class uh, in this function, which is when we are creating our new conversation. So we're gonna pass in nil because there's no ID yet. Head back to this. And in view did load, we call this function. But now that I think about it, we can actually call this function even earlier. We can call this function in our constructor itself. So in the constructor after the super, well, we can say if uh, uh, if let id equals conversation id, and let's actually change the name here because it's going to collide with this. So we can say if let conversation id is that, then we'll go ahead and call this function. Uh, if we don't have a conversation ID, there's no reason to listen for database updates. And in this function, we can simply say database manager dot shared, and we stubbed out a function called get uh, all messages with conversation ID. So you can pass in uh, that conversation ID. So I'm gonna just have a parameter in this function called ID and pass that in. And the completion is gonna be a result that returns in the successful case. Right now it's a string, but we're gonna update that function to similarly to the conversation stuff, return a collection of messages. So we're gonna switch on the result here. And in the case of success, we're gonna say messages. And in the case of failure, we're gonna say error. And if an error occurs, we're gonna say fail to get messages and append in that error. And in the case of uh, successfully getting messages, we're gonna make sure that messages uh, collection is not empty by doing this. And if it is, we'll just return because if we don't have any messages, no need to continue. Let's make sure we do a weak self over here because we're gonna reference a property on self and we don't wanna cause a retain cycle. Uh, and before we continue on here, let's update this function call in our constructor up here to pass in the ID. And we're gonna pass in that unwrapped identifier right here, like so. And finally, in here, we want to say self optional messages equals messages. And we'll get an error for this because the messages type currently is a string. So let's actually command click into this and implement this function. So again, like I said, the result here is going to have a collection of message objects. And I'm gonna be super lazy and basically just copy this whole thing up here that we wrote to get conversations. And we're gonna tweak it for messages. The workflow is basically the same. So what we care about now is on the database, we want to not observe the email slash this conversation. Rather, we want to observe the conversation ID slash messages and if we come back to the database here you'll see that the conversation id in the database in here let's close up this whole thing here you'll see that the conversation id has this messages key and it points to an array of these message objects so every time a new message is sent it gets appended in here and we'll get a uh, call to this closure saying, hey, there's a new message, you should update yourself. And then we can update the UI every time. So again, we're gonna say guardlet value is snapshot.value and it's gonna be an array of these dictionaries, which is good to go. Uh, if we don't have a we'll return and we'll call failure, then we want to compact map to get messages. And I'm gonna delete all of this. We're gonna type it out fresh for our 
messages use case. Let's get rid of this return as well. And once uh, once we have those messages, we're going to pass it to our completion handler for the success case. Now, for messages, we already basically have this array and we are uh, com compact mapping on it. We want to make sure the dictionary has the values that we expect. And if we come in here, we see the values that we expect are content, date, ID is red, name, sender, email, and type. So we have a total of seven in here. And let's unwrap them basically. So we're going to say guard let's name equals dictionary. And it's a name as a string. The next one is is red is going to be dictionary is red as a boolean. Next one is going to be I think it was ID, which is the message ID. So we're going to do that dictionary ID as string. And let's come back here and see what else we had in here. So we have content, date, and sender email. Let's do those next. So we're going to say let's content is going to be a dictionary content as string. Let's sender email is going to be a dictionary sender underscore email as a string. And then we're going to have the date string which is going to be a dictionary and it'll be a date key as again a string and if we don't have any uh, all of these properties we're going to return nil because we want all of them now let's fix up the alignment here add a comma here that i missed and try that again control i and this should be a total of seven so it looks like we're missing one and i think the one we're missing is type so type is going to help us later on support photo messages, location, videos, all that jazz. So go ahead and copy one of these and paste it. And you can say type is dictionary type. Now, if we don't have all these, we'll return nil. If we do, we want to basically instantiate a message object, which is the struct we created in one of the earlier videos, has a sender. A message ID which is simple it's the message ID we unwrapped has a uh, sent date so we want to basically uh, get a date and we have a date formatter off of the chat view controller and there is a function in here called date from string and pass in the date string this whole thing actually returns optional in case the string that you pass in is malformed so add that as a part of your guard let statement and now we can use this date thing in here. Kind for now, let's just hard code it to be text and pass in the content. Later on, we're gonna use the type property here to figure out what type of content it should show. And the sender is gonna be uh, derived by the sender email. So let's create, whoops, let's call this sender. Now let's create a constant here, which will be our sender struct, which has a photo URL, which we'll leave uh, empty for now, like that. We have a sender ID, which is going to be the sender email. What did I call it? Sender email, message ID, content, there it is, sender email, so no underscore. And display name will be their name. So this will be sufficient to return messages back. And we have warnings here because we're not utilizing these properties yet. So is red and type. So if you want to get rid of the warnings, you can comment it out for now. I'll just leave it since the warning doesn't cause a build failure. It just warns us. And let's see, we're sending this back via the completion handler now. So let's go back to that chat view controller and see what else we need to do. So in our chat view controller, the uh, number of, let's see, where's that function? The number of elements that we're returning is the number of things and messages. We're returning the message, which is perfect. Uh, this is complaining down here in this function for the sender. And the reason it's complaining is because we have a fatal error. So it'll never get called. So let's see if you can get rid of it. Hit command B. It should let you compile still because we actually should absolutely always have uh, the current user, which is you who are who is logged in. So that looks good to me. 
every time that completion is called, we want to update this collection view of messages. So now that the messages array has been updated to the new uh, instance that it returns, we can say self dot message collection view. And I believe there's a reload data off of this. So there is reload data and keep offset. And actually, this is what we want. So if the user has scrolled to the top and they're reading older messages and a new message comes in, we don't want it to scroll down because that's a pretty bad experience. Uh, the thing we do want to make sure we do is wrap this whole call to be on the main thread because it's a UI operation. We want all of those to occur on the main queue. So wrap it in a dispatch queue dot main dot async. And I believe that should be sufficient to show our messages in here. So go ahead and hit command R. Uh, I have a feeling something is probably broken, but we'll figure it out together. Go ahead and open this. And if you take a look at this, we actually have our message coming in. The thing that is not looking too good, though, is this is the message that we sent to Joe. So that doesn't look too right. So let's uh, let's figure out what we've got going on and correct. The way that uh, this determines how to lay out the messages in terms of right or left is the current user here. Uh, so current sender is, we're saying is self sender. Uh, and let's go to self sender, which is up here, which is this computed property. And I had a feeling I knew what the issue was. So the issue is we're using the email here and we want to be using the safe email because in the database, we only bring in the safe emails. So to create a safe email, you're going to say database manager, safe email, pass in the email and use the safe email instead here and go ahead and Right now we're showing Joe Smith, so let's just call this, let's call this me. And later on, we're also going to save the user's name to user defaults, similar to the email that we'll be able to pull out from, but you can just say me for now. And don't worry about the photo URL either. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And hopefully that message should be on the right side now since we sent it. Okay, perfect. So this is on the right side now. Now what I'm gonna do is let's actually open up another simulator and because we're observing real time, we should be able to send messages and they should update real time. And I think this is the most exciting part of the video for me at least because you actually get to build a full-fledged email app or a full-fledged messaging app, chatting app. So give it a second, maybe a few more seconds than I thought. These simulators are so weird. Sometimes they're super fast. Sometimes they're super slow. Like this just straight up is not working now, apparently. So let's pick a different simulator because this one wants to be difficult. Yeah, so that one, uh, that one's not being too helpful. So let's close this one. Let's try this one. There it goes. Okay, so this one uh, over here has started up and over here we're logged into my Facebook account. So over here what we want to do is let's log into Joe's account. So it's joe at gmail.com and I believe his password was password. And once we have signed in you'll notice that it doesn't automatically fetch the conversation and that's because we need to set up some logic to notify the controller to refresh after login. But if we do in fact open this up again we should have the conversation here. And actually, I just discovered a bug. So we don't have the conversation here because in our database, if you recall, we added under the sending user this conversation. But what we need to do is we also need to add it under Joe, which is the recipient user. Because when Joe signs in, he's the software, the app is looking for uh, the key under Joe. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop execution here of the app. We're gonna go ahead and delete this conversation bit here. We're also gonna delete this conversation here, which is the root that holds the messages. And I'm gonna quickly go to the database manager. We wanna find the function called create new conversation. And the first thing we add is that conversation reference. So what we wanna do is we're creating uh, a conversation reference to the other user email and I think this is the safe email already because we use it in here directly so what we want to do is create another one of these I'm gonna paste it right below and we're gonna call this 
recipient underscore new conversation. The ID stays the same. The other user email changes, right? So this is gonna be, I believe we called it safe email up above. This is our email, uh, us as in the sender. The name will also change because this should be the name of us. So we're gonna just call it self for now. Uh, later on, we're gonna have to cache the user's name to send it. The date string, message, and false, all of this remains the same. And now we want to basically add it into our reference for the recipient user. So let's see. So what we can do in here is we can say database dot child and the child that we want to add it to uh, is essentially the other user, which is the other user email slash conversations. So what we're doing is basically this whole logic here. So actually, let's see, where is the logic I'm looking for? What we're doing is where is the set value that I'd like? Let's see, we first observe the value, and then here we're appending to it. That's what I was looking for. So we also want to do this for uh, the recipient user, like I mentioned. So let me get rid of this. So let's go and let me, let's just do it straight up here. So down here we'll comment and say this is the uh, update current user conversation entry and up here we want to update recipient conversation entry so the first thing we want to do is get their current conversations for the recipients the child is basically uh, going to be the other user email slash conversations and we want to observe a single value and this is going to give us a snapshot in and what we can do now here is we can say uh, if var conversations equals snapshot dot value as a collection of dictionaries like that, then we can know that we would need to append. Otherwise, the recipient user doesn't have any conversations. So we can actually go ahead and just create it for them. And that's basically the logic that's going on over here as well. So uh, basically for the creation case, this is easy we can say for this database child node, we want to set a value, and the value is going to be a array of uh, recipient conversation objects, and we created that recipient new conversation data up above, so we can just append that in there. We need to do a self dot on this since we're in a closure, and we also need to do it on here since we're in a closure. And this is going to cause a memory uh, leak, so we'll fix that in a second. In the case of the conversation for the recipient being present already, we can say conversations. And we can append in our recipient new conversation. And finally, we can call this bit of code again where we want to now replace in the database that child's conversation. Uh, with conversation again, and this should now include uh, the new conversation. So it looks like we have an error here, and let's see, conversation, this should be just conversation, not conversation ID, and it'll let us append like that. Let's fix up this mem memory leak because we're referencing self from a async block. So go ahead and do weak self here, and you want to do self optional, self optional, we are also going to do self optional here and come up to the top of this closure and make sure you do a weak self here as well. And go ahead and hit command B. Should be building successfully. And let's open these up again. I think I deleted the conversations here, which I did. So let me go ahead and close this app. 
on the right. And if we open it, there's no conversations here. Close this one up and reopen it here. No conversations here. So let me come over here and search for Joe. And actually, I need to build and run in both simulators again. So let's build and run it uh, over here. And let me also build and run it in the other simulator so it has our latest code changes. So give that a few seconds to compile. I think that's the one over here on the right it's building. Hopefully, there it goes. And let's see if this works. So let's over here look for Joe. We're going to find Joe. It's going to open up a new chat window. And we're going to say, hey, man, how's it going over there? And we're going to hit send over here. And the coolest part of this is if you look at this, we get a real time conversation that popped up over here. And we also have it popped up over here. This too updated. So it is truly real time. And I think that's the coolest part of this whole piece. So if we open it up from here, we see that or we should see the message in here. It looks like we don't. So that's that's strange. So if we open it up over here, we do see the message over here. So now let's figure out why it's not showing up over here for this user. So let's go to our chat view controller and let's take a look at our logic. So we should be checking in the database. Let's see, where's that database call? Here it is. So we, we should be seeing in the database, give me all the messages with this conversation ID. So let me put a uh, print in here so we can see what's going on. Success in getting messages. And let me run it on that other simulator because that one's not able to get the messages. I suspect we messed up something with our email identifiers. So go ahead and run it in that simulator. And let me go back to Xcode and let's see what we've got going on. So let me expand this a little bit and clear this out. And once we tap into this, let's see what happens. So we get this print here for success in getting messages, but clearly we're not rendering it. So that's not good. And let's close this pop up. So let me see if this is empty, in fact. So we can say print messages are empty. And let me also append in here whatever we're getting. So we are assigning to messages and we're calling reload on this guy. And for reloading it, down here, the current user uh, should be successfully returned. We're returning the message at the given section, which is correct. And messages count should have one message in it. So let's try that again. These are my favorite parts to leave in the video, so you guys get a truly realistic view of debugging. So let me click in and it looks like we do get a message. Oh, look at that. Okay, that was kind of strange. So we are loading in the message, but it seems like the message is actually hidden behind our hidden behind our uh, navigation bar up here. So it wasn't an issue of the message not coming in. It's an issue of we should probably be uh, whoops, we should probably be fetching the message. Uh, once either the screen loads or I think a better approach would be uh, because we call this fetch in the initializer, I think we call it in the initializer, what we can do is we can also pass in a uh, should scroll to bottom parameter. And the first time we load uh, everything in, we do want to scroll to bottom because uh, we have just clicked into a conversation, but we want to make sure we don't scroll to bottom in the case the user is reading older messages. So we can put that in there. And if it's not set to true, so it's false, we'll use this function. Otherwise, we can do a reload. I think we can just do a reload data and it will scroll it to the bottom and let me actually do it a different way. So let's actually just call this regardless. And we can say that if if should scroll to bottom is set, we can explicitly say on this, I think there is a scroll option. We want scroll to bottom. There we go. So when this function is called from the initializer and messages come in, we pass in true. So it should scroll itself to the bottom. So let's hit command R and make sure that in fact is the case. 
so we're gonna hit this and messages came in but it looks like again it uh did not really cooperate so we might have to embed this controller in a container controller the other option that we could do is let's move this whole uh function call from the initializer to view did uh, appear so here we have view did layout or no we have view did appear so we can actually paste it in right here and i think now the insets should be set properly so it should show up and if it doesn't we'll embed this in a container view controller which is not a problem so it looks like i think it worked that time yeah okay so that time it looks like it comes in it's still a little weird if it's hidden so we might have to debug that later but i think that's where we can wrap it up i see one problem here where when we tap into this we see the name is properly set here but when we tap in on this side it's actually set properly here too the issue is uh, when we when when we basically go and insert the other the recipient user we don't cache on the device the current user's name that's starting the conversation so we just passed in self I think directly in here so if we just do a project wide search you see that we passed in uh, the name self and I believe this is in the recipient data so the next video will quickly uh, cache our name as well and talk about different kinds of messages and also real-time updates. And I actually think real-time updates should already be good to go. So if we come over here and open this up already, and if we type in, let's say like, here's another, here is a, another message and hit send. We should get it over here. If I hit send properly, it looks like we don't. So that's kind of strange. So. Let's see. Looks like we're not sending it. Oh, the reason we're not getting it. Okay, I know why we're not getting it. So we'll actually have to fix that in the next video. Uh, so basically, the reason we're not getting it is in the chat view controller, we are not handling the send button case for the if else we added here if it's a new conversation. So now it's not a new conversation. So we just want to send a message. So we'll take care of that in the next video. It's fairly simple now that we have our database things implemented. Plus this video has gotten kind of long. That said, if you haven't smashed that like button down below, please make sure to do so with the YouTube algorithm. Comment if you have any questions or errors you hit. Uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next part.